everyone, welcome to Stan the White Man TV. I'm your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I help try to help you expand your palate and learn something about wines. Uh, this is episode 219. Episode 220 is going to seem kind of funny to you because I mentioned the U.S. Open. It was a past episode that I did, and I just didn't get it out there, and I'm going to do it after 218 and 219 because that's just the way I roll. And, you know, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes that's the way it works. I actually um, didn't have a chance to record it. I tried to do it a couple of times. It just didn't work out. Going into the 4th of July in San Juan Islands is redonkulously busy. And, you know, I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying I didn't do it. And that's the way it's going to roll. Hopefully you understand that. And you watch it. You know, it's funny. I look back at my past episodes. Some of them have, like, one view. What is up with that? One view, and then others have 25, 50, 100, whatever. You know, I'm all over the place. I need to build that up. That's what I'm working on. I'm going to do a better job. At the, well, I'm going to do what I can do. I can only do what I can do. Either you watch it or you don't. And I hope you're enjoying these episodes. I'm doing decoy wines from Duckhorn. A Duckhorn iconic producer out of Napa Valley. A lot of you know Duckhorn. I know you. a lot of you know Duckhorn. And uh, they do this second label called Decoy. They're a lot less expensive. I mean, Duckhorn wines roll in about anywhere from 75 to 80 bucks, depending on where you live. And the Sauvignon Blanc is up around in the $20 range. So they're not cheap. They also recently did a Red Mountain project called Canvasback. Excellent wine. I did not buy enough for the store. I have to wait until September now for the second release. Very successful. Duckhorn actually tried to buy the last bit of property on Red Mountain and got outbid by somebody else. So, but they're still sourcing their fruit. A lot of the California wineries are coming up to Washington, realizing the value of the fruit, quality of fruit, the value of the terroir, all that stuff. Washington State, they understand. And they're stepping up to the plate. Gallo did it, now Duckhorn, and others. The winemaker, I think, from uh, uh, Bryan Family Vineyards left that winery. Very, I mean, expensive winery. Uh, the wines are ridiculously expensive. He left to come to work for a Red Mountain, a Woodenville winery that uses Red Mountain fruit. Let's, okay. We're going to start off with Duckhorn Pinot Noir from Sonoma County. A very good area for producing Pinot Noir. These both roll in the Zin and the Pinot roll in at $25. Let's give you a little view of the label. I don't know how many of you have heard of Duckhorn. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this wine, this uh, second label, Duckhorn. Right off the bat, I love the kind of Burgundian, kind of sulfur thing that goes on. Uh, this is unusual, not always there with California Pinot Noir. A little bit of baked earth. Get a bit, a little bit of sarsaparilla root beer. Lots of cherries and red flowers. And, you know, that's very good nose for a California Pinot Noir. Now, I'm not saying that I haven't gotten a lot of good experience with California Pinot. It's just not always, sometimes you get that kind of Syrah element or that heavier nose aromatics coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Um, good acidity. Nice balance. I get some ripe fruit, but that acid kind of, you know, balances it out. You don't feel like you're getting a big boatload of Syrah in this wine. The, the sarsaparilla comes through big time on the mid palate towards the finish. A lot of uh, cherries. A little bit of earthiness coming through and red flowers. None of that California love handle that you get along with a lot of these wines. You know, none of that, you know, right here. A little extra fat on the back end. This is excellent. This is really good Pinot Noir. Even getting a little bit of black licorice right at the end of the mid palate into the finish. Really good Pinot. I like the balance. Now, granted, I have a few things in my 
my secret stash of Pinots under $20 that are really good. But I always am excited to find a really good Pinot for 25 bucks. 25 bones is not bad for this Pinot Noir. It's excellent. I'm going to go A-. minus. I think they did a really good job with that. Good job, Duckhorn. Let's move on. For those of you who know me, you know I love Zinfandel. Um, one time I read uh, Steve Imoff used to work for the wine enthusiast. I think he works for Kendall Jackson now. I don't know Steve. I've read him a few times. I like some of the stuff he's written. But he said he never found a good Zinfandel. I think that's ridiculous coming from a wine guy. Honestly, you know, we should all like all wines. I'm, I have it on record that I'm not a huge fan of Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, but I have found some that I like. I'm open-minded about that. So, you know, I just always think it's ridiculous when a wine guy says there's no good Zinfandel out there. That's crazy. Love Zinfandel. Have trouble finding it in my house because whenever I feel like spoiling myself, I crack open a bottle of Zin. So, you know, I'm surprised this made it to this episode, to tell you the truth. Let's see what we get on the nose. This is Sonoma County. Oh, better show the label. $25. Very, you know, I mean, a lot of you have probably heard of Duckhorn, have tried it. Anyway, there you go. Duckhorn, Zinn, Sonoma County. Now, cl classic Zinn producing area, all of you know. What is a classic Zinn producing area in Cali? Do you know? Lodi, Paso Robles. Those are really big Zinn producing areas. This is Sonoma County, and I've tasted some great Sonoma County Zinn. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh. A little bit of oak coming through. Get a little bit of a, like a brown sugar current element. A little bit of black raspberry. But the first thing I got was that kind of brown sugary current oaky thing coming through. Not judging it. Just saying that scares me just a little bit. Let's see what we get on palate. Not bad. I um, uh, actually impressed. Good acidity underneath. That brown sugar element just comes through on the backside just a little bit. A lot of ripe currants. This is really close to jammy, but it doesn't go there. I get that, and I get a little nice black pepper kick on the back side of this. There's a lot of you that like Zin that will like this wine, and you know it's 25 bucks. I can find a lot of uh, Zinfandels that um, fall into a little bit better profile for under 20 dollars. So you know I'm not super excited about this wine. It's good though. I mean, it really is good. I think a lot of you are going to like it that like Zinfandel. Um, you know, there's a, only a few Zins on my map that I would pay more than $25, $25 to $50 for. There's a few of them, but not a lot because there's so many good Zins in that $20, $20 to $15 category that really hit the nail on the head. This has good depth. This has good fruit. This is a great bottle of Zin. You could even age this probably a couple of years. It wouldn't hurt it. I'm a little curious how that acid... There's good acid on this wine, which is a positive thing. Let's take another little taste. I'm going to go B+. Plus. I think it's a great Zen. I like it. I think it's a little overpriced. I will say that right now. Uh, just because I, you know, because I'm such a Zen head. I've tasted, I've tasted Saldo, you know, from uh, Robert Bialy. Not Robert Bialy. That's the black chicken. Saldo from, well, he, I think he sold it. I think Orrin Swift sold that label. I'm not positive, but I think so. Anyway, it used to be an Orrin Swift, Swift Zinfandel called Saldo. 
I've tasted that, was very disappointed, and other times very ecstatic about it. Uh, Robert Bialy always does a good job with the black chicken. This might fall close to the black chicken range as far as um, structure, good fruit, all that. I did think it's slightly overpriced. Black chicken isn't cheap. It's I think it's 45 bucks. So this deserves a B plus. It delivers for $25. If you want to spoil yourself just a little bit, if you want a really good Zinfandel that doesn't go fruit bomb, doesn't go jammy, doesn't go all of that, I think this is a good call. Um, B plus. Good job, Duck Horn. Yeah, even a little bit of a petrol thing going on on the backside. Rubber, little rubber boot action. Did I, did I chew on a rubber boot lately? Because I'm getting a lot of that out of wines. Anyway, there you go. Duck horn decoy. Good values. Good wine for the money. Thanks for watching. And remember, wine is not a mystery. It is just fermented dr grape juice. Drink it. Enjoy it. Always be willing to expand your palate. Never get stuck on one thing. Um, you know, I'm just saying, there's a lot of great wines out there. You've seen them on this program. Stuff that you may never have heard of before. Try them. Expand your palate horizons. If you do that, and you never ever let anybody ever tell you what you should or shouldn't like, if we do that together, we can take the snob out of wine.